Panthers. I seriously miss seeing all of your faces, but I hope you guys are being safe at home. Remember to wash your hands and don't touch your face. In these videos, I will be basing each art lesson on one of the seven main elements of art, which are line, color, shape, form, value, space, and texture. In today's lesson, we are going to be drawing flowers and coloring them in using warm and cool colors. Option number one and option number two. So today we are going to be focusing on color and space. So let's get started. So for today's lesson, you're going to need a pencil, paper, and crayons, or anything else you want to use to color it in with. If you notice, I have a place mat behind my paper. Um, that is to protect the table. Um, so I don't want you to get in trouble for marking on your table or wherever you're coloring on. Notice there's lots of crayon marks on here. Um, if you don't have a place mat, then you can always just use another sheet of paper or open up a newspaper or something like that. That way you can color in, fill in the whole page without marking on anything behind it. So before we start our drawing, I want to review our color wheel. We're going to start out with our primary colors. Our primary colors are blue, red, and yellow, and they're called primary colors because you use these colors to make up all of the other colors. Any other color is going to be some combination of these, with the exception of black and white. So after, we, after that, we have our secondary colors. If you take equal parts of two primary colors, you'll get a secondary color. So if you mix equal parts of blue and red, you get purple. If you mix yellow and red, you get orange. And if you mix yellow and blue, you get green. So green, purple, and orange are our secondary colors. And last, we have our tertiary colors. I really like the tertiary colors. I think they're very pretty. Um, if you mix equal parts of a primary color and a secondary color, you get a tertiary color. Now on here, you'll notice the top of the colors. Um, green, blue, and purple are cool colors. And the colors on bottom, the yellow, orange, and red are warm colors. Um, whatever colors you use in a piece of art is going to have a big effect on the overall feeling of the artwork. So we're going to focus on using cool colors and warm colors today. We have two different sections that we're going to color in differently. So one section we're going to color in using the cool colors and the other section we're going to color in using the warm colors. Typically cool colors look good together and warm colors look good together. So here we go. So one one last thing to review before we get started on drawing our flowers. Anytime I draw or paint something, I like to sketch out some ideas of different shapes and sizes of what I'm going to draw and where I'm going to place it on the page. Since today we're going to be drawing something on a horizontal page, I am just going to roughly sketch out four different horizontal boxes. And I'm going to draw different shapes and sizes in those boxes to see where I want to place things. We're going to be drawing flowers today. We're going to draw three flowers, so I'm going to try out some different sizes and different spacing of those flowers to see what I want to do. First, I'll see what one large flower looks like with two small flowers on the side. Or maybe I will put a clump of flowers over here on the left. Or I could try doing a clump in the middle with a large, medium, and small size. Or maybe on the bottom, I could try doing three pretty equal sized little flowers. That helps give you an idea of what your artwork's gonna look like. I like the bottom left corner, so we're gonna go with that. But anytime you're drawing something, this is a good idea to start with. And now we can start drawing our flowers. That's gonna be our finished product. Now, just like we did in our little practice sketches, I'm gonna start by drawing three circles, just to be guides, outlines for where I wanna place my flowers. And I wanna draw them very lightly because I'm gonna come back and erase them later. Um, I'm gonna do the front one, the largest. Actually, I don't really like the shape of that second one, so I'm gonna start over, which you can always do. Um, you and I make mistakes, which is why I want you to use pencil so that you can erase it if you need to. I'm going to have my front flower be the biggest, and then I'm going to draw one slightly smaller than that up to the right. Actually, I want it a tiny bit bigger than that. Um, I think it's really important before you're drawing anything to really plan out, and the beginning stages are super important. Um, so if you get your spacing 
right, then that'll help it look good at the end. So I like the spacing of those. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie now, but I want you guys to keep using pencils so that way you can erase if you need to. This front flower is what we're gonna start with. And we're gonna start by drawing a little tiny teardrop petal in the middle. And then we're gonna just draw a little ring of those similar sizes all the way around that petal. As we're drawing the petals today, they're going to get bigger and bigger as we draw them. So that first section is pretty much the same size, but now that I'm gonna to go to the next ring of petals, I'm gonna make those petals slightly bigger than the middle ones. And sometimes I like to draw them out of order so that they're not evenly spaced. It's okay if some petals are closer together than others, that makes it look more natural. And now I'm gonna draw some slightly bigger petals on the next layer. And having them not totally evenly spaced is actually a good thing. It looks more, more natural. Okay, so now the next layer, I'm gonna draw them even bigger than that. If you can see the pencil ring helps us keep everything um, in a good order so that we're not having tons of petals on one side and shorter petals on another. It's just a good guideline. And then once we get to our outer layer of petals, now we're gonna draw them even bigger and they're not gonna be quite as long. There's gonna be some kind of fat petals sticking out on the edges. So we'll just do one more layer I think, and we'll be done with those ones. And if you need to, you can always pause the video to catch up or take your time if you want. It's a good thing about videos. I think I'm almost done. I'm just gonna uh, fill in a couple more to round it out a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to start with my second flower. I'm going to make a dot in the middle of that circle. And we're going to draw some long, thin petals. Come out to a point. Kind of stretched teardrops. So I did top and bottom. Now I'll do one on each of the sides. And be careful if you're drawing a petal behind the first flower. You don't want those lines to go across. Now we're going to fill in some petals on each of those corners. And this one is going to be a little bit closer to the other side, I mean closer to the other petals. And now we'll just fill in the other spots and then we'll make a couple more. And then I'm going to add one behind this petal, so maybe just add a couple lines so it looks like one is going behind that first flower. And then we're going to add some lines in the center of our petals. Okay, now we're going to draw our last flower. And I want to move that a little bit lower, I think. So I'm just gonna erase that guideline and redraw my guideline, because I still like to have a guideline. And I like that a little better. So I'm going to draw the center of that flower, draw three tiny little circles. And then we're going to have five larger petals on this tiny flower, and I like to draw five lines to begin with, and that helps me just space them out better. Once I draw those lines, then I can add the tops of the petals. And you can add more lines once you have a couple of petals drawn. It just helps with spacing, so you don't start by drawing four petals and then have no room for the fifth ones. The fifth one's really tiny. You just do tiny waves at the top, and this one's gonna go behind that first flower. And now we can start drawing our leaves. 
I'm going to draw three leaves. And oh, first I'm going to erase my circles. And if you accidentally drew dark circles with your pencil, it's okay because when we color it in, um, it really shouldn't show up that much. Try to erase what you can, but if you can still see some of your pencil lines, it should get pretty well covered up once we color it. I'm almost done erasing. I get rid of the eraser dust. Now let's draw our leaves. I like to draw out the center vein first. And then I'm going to draw the sides of the leaf and kind of bring your pencil down to see if there's any lines that leaf will show up behind the petals of the flowers. I'm going to do one more coming out to the right. Drawing the center vein first and then the sides. I'm going to draw one more leaf coming up to the left center vein and lines. And the last thing we're going to add is just some tilted veins. They're kind of like little arrows. And be careful when you're going behind the petals of the other flowers that you don't have the lines go past where they need to go. And have your veins all pointing inward into the center. So that the vein lines are pointing to the middle. Okay. And I'll add a couple in the middle. And there we go. Now as we color this, I want you to choose which section you want to color with cool colors and which section you want to use coloring warm colors. For me, I'm going to color the flowers and leaves in cool colors. So I'm going to use blue, purple, and green for the flowers and leaves. And then the, with the background, I'm going to color it in using warm colors. So red, yellow, and orange. And you can use those colors however you want to, but please keep them in their own areas. So that way, the middle, you can clearly see the cool colors, and then the background, you can clearly see the warm colors. Here we go.
Alright guys, that's it for our lesson today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be posting one new lesson each week, so there will be more to come. I hope you guys have a good day.